Welcome to week three of documenting my road to a thousand users, trying to get at, get in front of people that have the problem that I'm trying to solve. Uh, so I've had about, I've had 10 of those meetings so far. I, I don't think I understand this problem well enough yet. It's really what I'm, I'm taking away from these conversations is that I don't understand this problem well enough yet to really build anything around it, build a solution to my problem of scope creep. But what I'm gathering from these meetings is, is that everyone does scoping and client work differently. Like my hands are kind of tied in terms of building until I have enough of these conversations to and come to an epiphany of like, okay, this is one thing that they're all saying. Everyone is saying the same thing in, in, in this in this thing. You know, this one thing, and that and that's when I feel like I should I should build that. Right. That's the thing that I paid. This is my best stab at the first at the most core part of this problem. I should be waiting until I understand what that is. And I don't yet. And I have to be mature enough to know what I don't know. Um, and and I, and every time I, have, I talk to somebody, I feel like I'm getting a little bit closer to that epiphany. If you're non technical and you don't know how to build applications or you don't know how to build the, the problem is that is exactly that. I don't know how to build something. I have an idea, but I can't build it. The problem when you are a developer or you do have the capability to build applications is I don't know what to build. I don't know what to focus on. So it's a different problem. The, the impulse for me as somebody who can build apps is to just start building. And it's, it's not a good, it, I, I'm trying to discipline myself around just like, take a step back. You don't know what to build yet. Don't just build for the sake of building. Uh, but that, that, that discipline is something that I'm struggling with. Uh, the, the temptation is real to just build stuff, uh, but it's it's you just wind up working on jumping from project to project endlessly if you if you work that way. Also realize that in these meetings, uh, the every time that I've actually shown the tool, I've been disappointed with the reaction. Uh, and I, I was doing that early on. I was show you know I, we would get into the conversation. I would dig a little bit on what 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 their pain points are, and I'm getting good at that. But I would always end it with kind of saying, oh, this is my solution to the problem. And and every every time I did that, I was disappointed with the reaction that I got. It was just kind of like you know they didn't really under you know they didn't really get it. And, and I realized that's because of of the narrow solution that I proposed to the problem that they have. I've solved my own problem of scope creep with my clients, and I built around that, and that's fine. That's great. That works for me. But it doesn't apply to everyone else who has their own way of 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 scoping and, and, and delivering. So I've stopped showing it with, with, with better results because it's just a conversation. There's no, there's no pressure on me to deliver anything. It's just like, just talk to me. I just talk to the person, try to get at, at, at what their, uh, what their pain points are. Um, um, a, a lot of people bring up that they, you know, there are other tools that are out there. And this is another thing that I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, when I first heard like, oh shit, there's like similar tools that are going, so, trying to solve the same exact problem that I am. And that was discouraging at first. Um, but then I realized these are such new products. They're not, you know, like, I think it actually, it, it puts me in an advantageous position because no one's paying attention to me. No one knows what I'm doing really, except for the, you know, people that I'm talking to. So I can follow what's happening with them with the, if you're building an app, you're going to, at some point, you're going to find something similar. I can't be so arrogant to think I'm the only one that's trying to solve this problem. There's, there's other people out there that, that are just as smart as me and have the same capabilities and they probably do it better than me, but they don't have the same perspective that I have. And they may be building for a different, a slightly different audience than I am. Uh, and I can also watch them and, and learn from the mistakes that they make with those platforms. So if you're feeling like, oh man, I should forget about it because someone's already taking this on, not so fast, not so fast. You may be in a different position than them. And another thing that I'm realizing is that I don't think the problem is really scope creep. I think it's deeper than that. I think I think the, the real problem is a general lack of uniformity in the developer community around scoping, pricing, and delivering work. It's difficult to do and it's very nuanced. Um, so I think scope creep is really a symptom of, of a bigger problem of this lack of standard that, that freelancers and agencies have. Everyone's doing it differently. There's no playbook for how to, how to scope work. Um, so maybe that's an opportunity. Maybe that's, that's a, I think an important epiphany that I've come to in the last two weeks. So it's kind of exciting. It's like being an investigator.
And I encourage anybody who's doing this, who's building an app and doing, you know, kind of following this process is keep digging, like keep, keep digging at that, chipping away at that problem. Like it, it, you're, you're owning this problem by digging so deep, by doing it, putting more effort and energy and questioning more than anyone else has is really how you're going to get ahead. Because say, say Google was super interested in solving this problem. They would have done it already. You know what I mean? Like all of the resources in the world, if, if all the resources in the world are directed at this problem, like you know, like they'll, they'll figure it out, but no, no one seems to care as much as I do about this, you know, and at least anyone that I've come across at this point. So I think that's where the, the strength. So again, if you feel like another thing that I was worried about, like in, in previous ideas, is like your idea is getting stolen, you know, like putting it out there in this way that I'm doing, like I'm streaming everything that I'm learning and everything that I'm doing and everything that I'm building literally from like my, my, from my editor. I'm putting it all out there, you know, for exposure, for criticism, for someone to steal the idea. But I'm not worried about that because like, who gives a shit? Who gives a shit what I'm doing? No one cares. I care, but no, and no one cares about this problem as much as I do. And that's, that's the advantage that you have. Um, so I think that that's something important to keep in mind too. Don't worry about getting your ideas stolen. The more you put out there, the better. The more someone did, I did want to say that someone did call the app ugly, which, <laughs> which I found funny because I went on that whole rant in the first week about how design doesn't matter. And I was tempted. My initial gut reaction was to say, mm, maybe I should put some effort into the design. Um, and, I, and then I thought about it a little bit. And I kind of, I, I realized that the person I was talking to didn't care enough about the problem that I'm going after. Uh, it was, so he's, it was kind of like, a just I'll just give some surface level feedback because I want to tell him something. So he feels like this wasn't really, you know, a waste of time. So that could be confirmation bias on my part and me just not wanting to, you know, say that the design part is important. Uh, you know, or, or I, I keep, uh, let me not say design, that the experience is not important. Um, and, and I think that's an easy thing to criticize if you don't have the problem or you don't get the problem. Um, it, it's just like, oh yeah, your design looks shitty. It's easy. It's an easy thing to say. Uh, I know that already, though. So first off, when I took a step back from like getting a little, a little bit uh, offended, but and I, but then I realized like it is ugly. What am I talking about? I said it was ugly from the beginning. So that I took that part out of it, uh, and then also like if so, if that's all they can say, then that they don't have the problem. They don't have the problem, and and I should probably just you know take this with a grain of salt and move on. Separating feedback to act on actionable feedback from surface level feedback i think is an important thing to do and it's not very obvious it's not obvious which is which so i think i think distinguishing between those two is a skill that you develop as you have these conversations i'd like to know what other people are building and your approach to attracting your first thousand users because uh, we can do this together if you if you're seeing this on youtube Follow the Twitch stream also, twitch.tv slash bubblehack. I stream every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, twitch.tv slash bubblehack. And, um, and that's it. That's all I got for this week. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you next week.